Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Aaron. Hello. Hi. Nice Hi. to have you here. And for folks that don't know you, Aaron, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Um, I'm Aaron Juncker. I'm from Switzerland, from Schaffhausen, and I'm a Windows Development MVP, a completely fresh MVP, so my first year. And I previously been a Windows Insider MVP, but that's another program. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't, I, I don't talk about it very often because we've had a few Windows Insiders folks who have, and Office Insiders as well, that have come over to the MVP program. What's the what's the Windows Insiders program all about? How do people find out about that? So, I mean, it's now it's no longer existing. It's, well, okay. Well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been a bit more community-focused on um everything that you did in the windows community it's it was very similar to the normal mvp program yeah well there's a because that's i know that you're as, as an mvp you're going to start i'm sure you've already had people reaching out like how did you do it what's the process like and how do i become an mvp and kind of all those questions mm -hmm. um there are a number of ways that people can get involved in the community and I mean, aside from the MVP and RD programs, there are, you know, tons of resources out there for, like, I, with the, I know the insider, the Windows Insiders program no longer exists, but there's other similar programs that are out there. And uh, so there's, there's more than just these, but what was, so you were part of the Windows Insiders. Was that kind of your path to becoming the MVP or is there more to the story? Um, so it's a bit more, a bit more to the story. It started around three and a half years ago. Um, and when I became a contributor to the Microsoft to Microsoft Power Choice, mm -hmm. if that's if for those who don't know, that's a set of utilities by Microsoft for uh, Windows Power users and it has a big variety of stuff like a color picker and and image resizer, the Windows tiling manager, and <laughs> so much stuff that I couldn't tell you all, um, everything. Sure. And so I started um, contributing there, and then I got in contact with uh, Microsoft employees, mm -hmm. and then it was just building up and getting more connections there and getting more connections there, and, and that just started like a wildfire and now I'm in Microsoft MVP. You know, that, that is a, uh, a, it's a great point to make. Cause I often, I always ask like, what, what was the path to becoming an MVP and, and people talk about getting involved in the community, but uh, for a lot of people that are, you know, customers of Microsoft that may have found those power toys and leveraged some of those open source tools, but then thought, you know, but it's missing this functionality or, it, it, it's it's doing something slightly different than I need. You can go and participate in those community discussions and potentially you know provide additions to those toys and those tools. And that is a you know that's a great way to get Microsoft recognition and to get started in the program. Yes, absolutely. And um, the Power Trust team is always searching for new use cases for new tools. And if you have uh, ideas we are always welcome that you just open an issue in the PowerTest repository and suggest a new feature there always and you have yeah. a, i don't know how often you're having calls and are there community calls around that we were talking about like what the latest additions are and the changes to the tools um so there's not really a, a public community call for Windows development, or there is, so they announced one, but, but it hasn't 
they haven't made an episode yet. So, yeah. Well, it's, I know that uh, I always uh, like to point people and I'll, I'll, of course, I'll have the links to your uh, GitHub profile because uh, you have right at the top is, in your profile, a link over to the, uh, the Power Toys um, repository, kind of all the pieces there. So again, that's something that people can go do a little investigation, take a look, see what's out there. If you're not already using the, the different tools, take a look at what's there and the activities that are happening. That's a that's a great way go in comment provide feedback yeah. i'm sure the team loves the feedback hey this is working hey, this is not working yep yeah it's it's so crucial i mean almost all of the power toys were made because of, because of feedback we got from the community and from people like me and from other people around the world and yes the team always like if you can provide us with a good use case why you need a feature, then we'll probably also be willing to to have a look at that at least. We can promise that we make it, but um we'll have to look at it. Well, it's uh, what are your other community activities? Like how else are you involved? Um so for example, I'm also a moderator in the Windows subreddit. So like R slash Windows, R slash Windows 10, R slash Windows 11, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, moderating posts, looking that people don't insult each other, all that stuff. And I also try to help the people there like with their Windows problems and yeah. <laughs> yep, so, well, I can see you've got blog, you've got a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, um, on my YouTube channel, I do a monthly video about all the use in the developer ecosystem mm -hmm. with a focus on Windows, but I try also to include other stuff. Um, yeah, and I have a blog, but that's not, it's not a very active blog. And mm. um, I try to do more blog posts but sometimes just I don't have enough time for this. I, I was talking to an MVP a couple of weeks ago and he said, no, no, my blog, it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get more active on it. It says right now I'm consistently writing once a year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, like, at least he's consistent in that, you know, yeah. and, but, but he's been blogging for years, you know. <laughs> but well that so what would you say what are your primary contribution types is it more on the github side and and act, act you know adding into those open source projects yeah definitely adding to the open source projects and also i'm doing a lot of triaging so um labeling new issues and trying to reproduce bugs yeah <laughs> Well, that's because yeah. that's always a message that I have. It's like some people aren't, you know, they're not comfortable presenting at conferences. They they don't want to. They're not bloggers. Um, I like I just was talking this week with uh, a fellow MVP who is writes fantastic content, but she just has no time to write the content. Um, she doesn't yeah. enjoy writing. She doesn't also have the time to write, but to put together a video or do a panel discussion uh, or, or, you know, to, to be able to speak to content that she has sessions around is very easy for her to go and do. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different for, for everyone else. I guess. So what are, are you involved with the local user group at all? Um, no, not really. No, I haven't found one yet. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, uh, may maybe I do one my own if I don't uh, like, if there's no, none, then yeah. you can always do it yourself. <laughs> Anybody who's watching this, that's in that general region that wants to, uh, get together, form a user group. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. Like we used to have here locally, uh, like I was on the board for the SharePoint user group and as you know, most of the, the it's, you know, SharePoint is kind of merged in with the rest of Microsoft 365. 
There were like a Dynamics user group. There's an AI user group. Um, there are other Microsoft technology groups. The pandemic, they all just kind of melted away. They're just kind of gone. So we, what we did is we rebranded um, to kind of include like everything. We're still kind of collaboration focused, but of multiple Microsoft technologies. And so we're, we're slowly building back up, but we have go between different topics. So there's, you know, it, there's, there's something to be said about joining forces with other technologists, maybe in the other product areas, you know, so that you're not talking yeah. about windows every month at a user group and not maybe not pulling in as big of a, a group, but if you maybe quarterly talk about windows and then have somebody coming in talking about other developer tools or getting into low code and talking power platform and just kind of mix it up. But yeah, yeah, yeah that point, yeah. Well, very cool. So, so what do you have coming up? Any, any, uh, are there any events or are there any big ticket items that you're working on that people should pay attention to? So I'm currently working on a new power choice module and um, it doesn't, I'm probably changing the name, but it's currently called file actions menu. It's just like a second context menu and that you can uh, invoke with a shortcut and it has actions that people wanted in the PowerTest repository for ages, like generating hashes or copying an image to the clipboard, like not the file, but the image itself mm -hmm. and copying all the paths of the selected items delimited by a comma or by space or a new line and all such useful stuff. And I'm currently, um, I made a tweet recently asking for uh, suggestions for of all the people, of all the power users of um, Windows, what they would like to see in such a menu. And um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, I know that Microsoft loves having community members contributing to these open source efforts. But just about every product company out there started either through community efforts or as a you know services professionals that are building you know scripts or solutions automations to uh, to improve upon what Microsoft has built, and suddenly they turn that around and start selling it as a product. Have you considered uh, kind of capitalizing on some of these tools and building a small product company? Um, I, I couldn't, don't have the time to do that. And I'm, I'm okay with doing that for free. And I mean, it brings me the Microsoft MVP award. <laughs> it sure. brought me yeah. many connections and, and maybe in the future, I will also, um, try to make money with this stuff, but at the moment, I'm happy with how it is. Well, like, like I said, I think Microsoft, I'm sure, prefers having, they love having partners in the ecosystem too, especially partners that have come up through the ranks of community. They they love that. And they hire a lot of community people as well directly. But uh, yeah, it, I just know that some people ask that, like, what what's the what's the kind of division of, of like the efforts that you're doing for the community versus your day job, your work versus future projects that you might capitalize on. I don't know if you ever think about that, if you kind of separate your activities that way. Um, I mean, I'm currently still, uh, still a student, so I'm not working for a company. And I just make whatever, um, whatever, I currently want. I mean, I also do have some personal projects that I'm working on right now. And if I want to work on them, I work on them. And if I want to work on something for Microsoft open source projects, I will work. On yeah. This. Well, that's that. So I, I again, it, it's more of a not to put you on the spot or anything. It's it's more of a because uh, I, I do the same thing. It's I 
I look at something, I say, hey, this would be a great fit for my day job. You know, this fits into this, this category and something else where, uh, you know, I have uh, participate in, for example, techie gurus and content and other activities where I say, I, I could put it on my blog, I could just put it out there, but it, it fits better over with this group, with this, this site. And then other things, um, you know, it's, it's more personal and I just, I, you know, I'm doing it because I'm passionate about it and I don't want other people editing. I want to, I want to promote that content or that, that item on its own and I'll just push it out through my own stuff. But um, I know that some people are torn between that. Some more, some companies have a hard time with people doing community activities they say well you should be doing all of that for us for the company like like you know we we own your time and and so you have to uh one you know a company that would say that and there are a lot out there i've worked for a couple um maybe separate yourself from those companies that are not supportive of community um but uh you know sometimes you just need to uh you know make that separation yourself uh, just mm -hmm. divide your time make it clear where that line of demarcation is but well very cool well uh so folks that want to find you i know you've got I've, I've seen what's attached to your uh your mvp profile so you've got a lot of social things that are out there where would you say you're most active so if people in social if people want to get in touch with you connect with you um probably on twitter or x how how it's called nowadays and um, there I'm the most active um, if, um, on social media. And also, you can also reach me through email. I'm always looking at all the emails. Awesome. Well, Aaron, I'll have, of course, all the links in the profile out on the blog when it goes live. Uh, and I'll have links to all the other social programs out there. And for folks, too, like I'm, I'm a, still a huge Twitter. I, I don't call it X. I still call it Twitter. Um, I'm a huge Twitter user. I, I just added you to the MVP buzz chat list, interviewee list as well. So if folks are interested in seeing what people that I've interviewed in this series, what they're talking about out on Twitter, go check that out, that list off of my profile on Buckley Planet as well. But uh, Aaron, really appreciate your time and, and nice meeting you. Hopefully uh, I'll get over your neck of the woods later this year, maybe uh, be able to see you at an event. Yeah. Maybe, yeah.